Hello everybody, this is Sheldon from Show Rock Art. Welcome to my channel. And yes, she's filled up, but I'm sorry that uh, during the time I shot the video, I believe that it wasn't quite filled up. So you might be um, feeling urges as you hear the water trickling. Anyway, um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a bloom today. Uh, this one here, I'm going to demonstrate how I did this piece and how I got that nice, beautiful glow of the red in the middle. It's very simple, but I just sometimes like, like to put something striking to pop up in the middle as well. And, but I also did some mixing of my um, pigments and of the prism pour from Color Art. And so I did a demonstration of how I did that as well. That's part of this video. Although I'm not using those pigments at the time because anytime you mix a pigment, you need to let it sit uh, for some time, maybe overnight or a full day, to let everything dissolve and then give it a new stir so that everything, because it helps later on when it's time to either varnish it or resin it, all the pigment has been dissolved into the medium, which has the varnish and all that protects the pigment. If it's not that way, you may get some uh, bleeding because some of those pigments had not been dissolved. And then when you put the new varnish on it, those new pigments that hasn't been dissolved primarily gets re-dissolved as you're putting on your new pigment. So that could be the problem. Um, but I have a demonstration of how I do that. And it's simplified. I don't have, I don't make it complicated. Um, and, um, Speaking of the reason why I did that, it's because um, one of my sweet dear artists, um, Callie Melvid, I think I, I think I know how, I think I pronounced it right. Um, she suggested to me that maybe during some of my videos, I show how I mix some of my paints. So this is for you, Callie. <laughs> anyway, and she was so generous. She sent me, um, even though everybody knows that I like to use um, my uh, US Floetrol mix. But she did generously send me a bottle of um, Australian Floetrol. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I will be using that as well. So you'll see me using it on and off. That's the second bottle someone sent to me. So I really appreciate that. And I do want to give a shout out to Becky Selman because she also, I it took me forever to find this, um, the orange, little mini blower, the world's smallest blower. And she sent me one. I was I was overjoyed because she sent me one. It was just so nice. And she gave me a couple of little extras um, in the care package as well. So please go check out her store. She has plenty of things. She she has those and she also um has uh, like Australia Floats Raw when people say, oh, I can't find no more Australia Floats Raw. I looked everywhere. Check her out. She usually has those things in stock. So um, thank you guys, both Becky and Callie. Now let's get over to the canvas so you'll see how I actually did this piece. Okay, everybody, I'm here and I'm going to be demonstrating how I mix a pigment and also um, a prism pour. Now, generally I don't do it in the way that most people would do, like wet the pigment first and all. Um, and there's a reason why I'll show you, but I'm going to be using this Cerulean Blue um, Prism Pour. I hope you can see that. And um, this is Carmen um, Primary Elements. I made my own sticker. That way I have to keep uh, going to the bottom of it to read what it is. So I made my own sticker so I know what exactly is it is on the top. So that's a good little tip for you if you want to know what color pigments you have. So it's Carmen and the Cerulean Blue. Okay, so first I take my, this is my mixture of two parts, untinted house paint, Glidden Premium Base 3, and one, one part of the Verithane Triple Thick Polyurethane. And it doesn't matter if it's satin finish or semi-gloss. You don't want the high gloss. I think that acts a little differently, but the semi-gloss and the satin is what I use pretty much. I'll switch back and forth, but it doesn't make a difference. 
as far as the medium goes and how it reacts. So, um, I like to make my amount first. So that's the amount of pigment or the prism pour I want to make, well, pretty much. So with the prism pour, it has to be mixed. So this dries clear. So even if it um, turns lighter on the painting, it'll darken back up to its original um, rich blue. So I just do um, pretty much like a two to one. So that's like two parts here. And I just eyeball it and I just kind of put a good amount in there because it will um, expand and well, the colors will actually um, mix up pretty well. So let me put you aside and I take my little paddle. And I just slowly fold and fold and fold until I get get it going. And then I just, I like to go up and over, up and over. Kind of go to the bottom, stir it, and just work with it. Don't rush the process. It will mix, just stir. Get the sides really well. Make sure all that is mixed up. Because if it's not mixed up, there you go. Then I start doing this. But if it's not mixed up, you know what will happen is the um, the prism pour will tend to not stretch pretty well. Because you need that medium as a binder, so to speak. It helps it out. And so if it, if it's not mixed very well, then the stretchability of the paint becomes limited and you end up with like broken lines uh, in your background from the paint, like the paint is um, breaking apart. Um, there's a, a thing you can look up called flocculation and it's got a lot to do with how there are positive and negative charges on the ions and the pigments and if they are off balance, they will attract to each other and then create gaps. It's like all these little particles that's evenly spaced is all in here. And then all of a sudden, when they attract to each other, they become partly together like that, which means it's more open white spaces. And that's why you see them little cracks in the paint when that happens. So your medium, helps to keep that from happening. So you see how I did that now? Nice and rich. I don't know if you can see the shimmer on that. I'm not sure if I'm in the camera or not, but I think I am. But nice and rich cerulean blue. So that's how I do that, okay? That's the prism pour. That was the easy one. The other one, I'm gonna set you aside. This is the Carmen. So, even though it looks this color, it will turn a nice rich red. So what I do is I put the amount that I want, maybe a little bit more, right there. Like one of these little scoops that they send with it. This looks like it's about a half teaspoon maybe a quarter teaspoon. That's more of a half teaspoon, I believe. So see, I put it on top. That way, instead of trying to stir it, I kind of fold, I press it down in there and kind of fold it. Now all these little particles now are no longer um, flying up in the air because I pressed it down in there. Cover it up very quickly. And then I stir. And stir slowly. 
make sure and here's what's what's key to these pigments most people will like i said the medium has binder into it whether it's the polyurethane or if anyone uses um any other kind of um store-bought pouring medium it has a binder in it which helps bind the pigments and coat them but what happens a lot of times is that um if you're not careful oh i got a little little drop on here oh let me get that out i didn't know that was in there all right that must have came off the lid so you always got to keep a clean lid too so What will happen is that you see how that's mixing up nice and good? Well, there are little dark spots. I don't know if you see those dark spots. That's part of the pigment that still has not dissolved yet. You need to let this rest overnight before you use it. A lot of times, if you're not careful, if you use it right away, all the pigment hasn't dissolved yet. And then you'll put it on your painting. And then when you put it on your painting, because it has not mixed with the binder, you will go to varnish it or do whatever you need to do to kind of like clean it off. You will find that it will bleed into whatever surface. So you see, you see that it seems like it might be bleeding. I don't think the problem is with the pigment itself because that's the case. All mica powder products will be doing the same thing. But these um, pigments are rich in color, and but they have to be fully dissolved. So you should wait about overnight, and it will thicken up, and it, it'll get little air bubbles in it and all from the from the from the dissolving, and then you can just go back through it and give it a slow stir, and break those air bubbles up and get it nice and smooth again. But right now, that's a nice rich red from that Carmen. So I just wanted to show you that. I'm not using these colors tonight in my pour, but I will be doing a um, a nice little bloom I decided to, try, to do just for um, therapy purposes um, to make some nice, pretty, um, colorful jelly bean type um, colors, and I will explain how I layer those um, while I'm doing it, okay? But for now, we will um, get you over to the canvas so we can do the bloom. Hello everybody. Um, this is like take six or seven probably. Um, you can see all the scraping and the, and the paint that's around. Um, I had to do some readjusting because some things just didn't like. The blowout I didn't like. There was a lot of things I didn't like. So, being Mr. Picky, I have to do what I have to do. So clearly my, and then what complicates matters, my spinner isn't level. So now I gotta deal with that. So this is Baltic Amber. I'm gonna put down first. some uh, Nebula Star. Um, let's go with some Midnight Shadow. I want to go from dark to light. Bit. 
Water Dragon and Nebula Star are close, but there are some differences when you have them side by side. Water Dragon is more blue. Um, Nebula Star has more of a greenish tint to it. But I'm going with the cool colors and I just wanted to warm it up with some of that Baltic Amber right from the start. So Water Dragon on top of that. Then Dioxazine Purple. To the Cerulean. back this way this time. To the Cerulean, then to the Twilight to lighten it up some here. And then to the what I call it. Andromeda interference. I like to put my interferences close to the top so you don't get lost. And a little touch of the Aqua Flash. I almost want to put that Carmen down. See what happens. Yeah. Sometimes you try something a little bit different. Carmen down. Like in the center. Maybe I'll get my black side activator a little bit of a red border. Who knows, right? Let's try it out. interesting a lot of those blues came out sometimes when it's too dark on one side you can blow down into the pillow lighten it up to put uh, a few modifications down with Mr. Toothpick. Tell you one thing that um that Carmen in the middle 
definitely gave it some pop. So let's uh, spin this puppy out. I think I might be happy finally with this one and I'm gonna leave it alone. All right, I think that's gonna do it. And I'm gonna get you down for a closer look as soon as I clean my hands off. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> it's the final wet result. Look at all that glisten and sparkle in there. And I can't wait for this to dry because some of these interference colors will go from violet to turquoise. And hopefully that picks that up. But look at those beautiful, warm, sunshiny sunset jelly beans in here that get to all this cool color like nighttime area in here and then bam this bright red how that glows in the center so there you have it folks thank you for watching again this is sheldon from shell rock art and have a great day. And once again, I say happy pouring.